I'm going to work three um, real short examples for you from section 5.1 solving trig equations. So the first one we want to do is solve this one right here the sine of theta equals one half and this looks just exactly like the stuff that we did in section 2 3 ex except when we're solving we don't care about restricted domains anymore. So a problem like this is going to come to you and it will say solve just like this solve theta, uh, sine of theta equals one half and then it will say this, where theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. Or it might say theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So if it says between 0 and 360, you know the problem is in degrees. If it says between 0 and 2 pi, you know the problem is in radians. Okay. Alright, so let's do this one in, we'll do this one in degrees. Alright, so you know from the unit circle that the sine of theta um, equals one half at 30 degrees. So here's 30 degrees and this point in the circle, the sine equals one half. And then you know by symmetry that over here there is a, another one, um, another angle where the sine also equals 30 degrees, I'm sorry, one half. So this angle right here is 30, so therefore this angle right here is 180 minus 30 and that's 150. So the sine is one half at 30 degrees and 150 degrees. And again, you already know that from your unit circle. So notice how I have to include both of these because it's asking me to include all the places the sine is one half between zero and 360. All right. So there's example one. Now let's do um, let's do another example. Example two. So this one says solve tangent, we'll use x, equals negative square root of 3. And we want this one between 0 and pi. So we just want half of the circle here. Okay? And so you know that uh, let's rewrite it in the other form using our inverse um, notations. We know that x is inverse tangent of negative square root of 3. And uh, kind of an easy way to do this, remember this problem is in radians. This is an easy way to do this, um, and I do this all the time, is I change my mode to degrees in my calculator, and then I type this in and then I get um, negative 60 degrees. Well, and then I look at my unit circle and I say, well, I know where that is. Negative 60 degrees is right here. Here's negative 60 degrees. Okay, but wait, the problem said between zero and pi. So now I know that over here in quadrant two, I also have a tangent whose value is negative square root of 3. And so if this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees. So um, at this point, let's go ahead and convert this to radians because you're going to have to do that at some point. So this is going to be pi over 3, negative pi over 3. So this piece right here is pi over 3. So that gives me this piece right here as 2 pi over 3. Okay. So solving for that, I get 2 pi over 3. Okay. Let's do another example. Another solving. Solve where the secant of x is 1.5 and we 
want this one to be between 0 and 2 pi. So we first want to change this to a cosine problem. So this says the cosine of x, well that's going to be the reciprocal, so 1 over 1.5. And then we're going to change this to an inverse problem. So x is now going to be inverse or arc cosine of 1 over 1. And so with your calculator in radiant mode, with calculator in radiant mode, go ahead and type this in, inverse cosine 1 over 1 1.5, and you get 0 0.8411. But we're not done. So draw your circle. This is super helpful in Chapter 5, drawing your circle. So we're just going to say up here in quadrant 1, right here, just right here, we know that the cosine of x, right there, right here, so the cosine of x is 0 0.8411, and it's positive in quadrant 1. Well, where else is the, uh, is the cosine positive? And well, that's going to be quadrant 4. So this is going to be in the negative direction, point eight four one one but look here I want my answer to be between zero and two pi so obviously oops there's my negative so obviously the x the negative doesn't work here so rather than going in this direction to satisfy my requirements for zero to two pi I have to go all the way around in this direction that's kind of different than what we did in two, section 2.5. In 2.5, with restricted domains, we really wanted it in the negative direction. Here, we don't want it in the negative direction. So how do I get this arc all the way around here? Well, I take 2 pi, and I subtract 0.8411. You can do that with your calculator. And you get 5.4421. So x is going to equal 0.8411 and 5.4421. All right, and then one more note. In a lot of these problems that will ask you for um, all solutions or might ask you to express this with um, the periodic property, and so to do that, let me just make a little bit of room right up here at the top. So to do that, um, for this particular example, you could say 0.8411, and that occurs every time you go around the circle. So plus k to pi, and then the other one is 5.4421, and if it asks you to express that with the periodic property, you could then say plus k to pi. All right, so there are three examples of uh, solving trig equations uh, using the same techniques we did in section 2.5, but omitting our uh, restricted domains.